Hi, everybody. I'm Vincent Racaniello. And as everyone knows, since the beginning of 2020, we've all been Zooming, or many of us have been Zooming. My virology course went to Zoom in March, and I've spent a lot of time here in my home office either teaching that course, doing podcasts, doing interviews, talking to people all on Zoom. And as you know, many people put in their background when they do a Zoom, a bookshelf. I decided when I set up my Zoom office to put the bookshelf on the right here and have you actually see in the background a fireplace and some above it a Michelle Banks watercolor of various viruses. And of course, other things here. There's a glowing yellow shelf of virus models. Anyway, you never really get to see my books, so I thought I'd show them to you. So let's turn around the camera and put it on the bookshelf, and I'll go through some of the books that I have there. All right, here's the bookshelf you never see. Now, I don't buy paper books anymore. A while ago, I switched to digital because for traveling, it's just so much better instead of having to carry heavy books. So most of the books here were either given to me recently or are a bit old. So let's go through some of the cooler ones here. All right, so here we have Bitten. That's by Chris Newby. The Secret History of Lyme Disease. Now, Chris Newby sent this to me a while ago with the idea of us doing a twim, but we haven't done it yet. So that's Bitten. This one is really good. You should read it. 21st Century Plague by Thomas Abraham. This is the story of SARS. That's SARS-1, not 2, SARS number 1. A lot of detail about how that got started and what happened. And in today's SARS-2 environment, it's a really good read. Now, here we have a book called COVID-19, the pandemic that Never should have happened and how to stop the next one. This again was sent to me. It's by Deborah McKenzie. I've yet to read it, but uh, hopefully we'll read it soon and uh, let you know how it is. Here we have The Rules of a Contagion by Adam Kucharski. This is a great book about epidemiology. Adam was on an episode of TWIV not too long ago. He sent this to me. Here's one that's a bit older. You can see lots of uh, sticky papers in it. The Panic Virus by Seth Mnookin. We covered this on a TWIV a couple of years ago. In fact, Seth was on TWIV, A True Story of Medicine, Science, and Fear. This is all about why there are anti-vaxxers. Really good book. Here is Smallpox, The Death of a Disease it's by D.A. Henderson. D.A. Henderson, I interviewed. You can find that interview on TWIV. He was the architect of the Smallpox Eradication Program. So the inside story of eradicating a worldwide killer, the only human virus to be eradicated so far. Really good book. Then we have Autism's False Prophets by Paul Offit. Bad Science, Risky Medicine, and the Search for a Cure. This, I, this the title, the title tells it all, right? It's all about autism and why people think it's linked to vaccines, but it really isn't. Paul Offit, of course, the architect of vaccines himself. Viruses, Plagues, and History by Michael Oldstone. Uh, then we have The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Re Rebecca Scoot. Hen Henrietta Lacks, of course, was the individual from whom HeLa cells were taken in the 1950s. Uh, this is a great book telling the history of it. And you'll find my name in this book a couple of times. Stephen Hawking, terrific. The Universe in a Nutshell. This one's really good. The Death of Kings. This is a medical history of the kings and queens of England what they died of. Interesting stuff. You know, many of them lived before medicine, so it's kind of dodgy. All right, let's move to the second shelf here. This is your brain on parasites. My son bought that for me a couple of Christmases ago. The Life of a Virus. This is really good by Angela Krieger. This is a story about tobacco mosaic virus in the 30s through the 60s, used as a model. It was the first virus discovered, of course, and a lot of work was done on it early before we could work on other viruses to understand the fundamental properties of viruses. Really good. Now we have Zika, the emerging epidemic by Donald McNeil. This was churned out very quickly after the outbreak. 
has some errors in it, unfortunately. Here's a good one. Lifting the impenetrable veil from yellow fever to Ebola hemorrhagic fever and SARS by Charlie Kalisher. You've heard him mentioned on TWIV. He's been a virologist for many years, has done a lot of field work. And this is his personal recollection of uh, all the years that he spent in virology. It's uh, really good. You'll, you'll not find this anywhere else, that information. So far, most of those were sent to me. I think the life of a virus I did buy now, here, this one was given to me by Peter Doherty when I visited him in Australia. Of course, Peter Doherty won a Nobel Prize. I went to interview him. You can find that interview on TWIV. The Beginner's Guide to Winning the Nobel Prize. It's basically about how to do good science, not particularly how to win a Nobel Prize. But it's always good to hear insights from people who have done really well. Uh, this book I've had many years, Phage and the Origins of Molecular Biology. This is a classic. This is actually not my copy. Uh, my copy is in my office at Columbia, and it's all falling apart. But this is the story of uh, the early days of phage research, which was stimulated by Max Delbruck. It's a series of essays. They're really great, really great essays. Another good one, One Health, People, Animals, and the Environment. It's an edited book by Ron Atlas and Stan Malloy. This is all about how our health is really intertwined with that of everything else on the planet. You can't separate it. That I bought, I believe. I bought this one, Evolution of Infectious Disease by Paul Ewald. I'm very interested in how pathogenic agents or microbes and viruses evolve, and this gives some theory about uh, how this is thought to happen. Another one that was given to me, Zoonoses. This is uh, an ASM press book, Infectious Diseases Transmissible from Animals to Humans. This is an edited book uh, with chapters on both bacterial and viral zoonoses. Is, here's another one I was given, vaccinated, one man's quest to defeat the world's deadliest diseases. This is mainly the story of Maurice Hilleman, who worked at Merck for many years and developed many, many human vaccines. It's again by Paul Offit. Next we have Paul Zim sorry, Carl Zimmer's book, A Planet of Viruses, Microbes and Evolution from ASM Press. Here's a good one. The Invisible Enemy, A Natural History of Viruses by Dorothy Crawford. This was given to me. This one's not quite a virology book, but it's great. The Red Queen, Sex and the Evolution of Human Nature by Matt Ridley. It's great. It's all about the Red Queen. And uh, we around here, we do all the running and don't seem to get anywhere. I bought this one myself. Then we have Life Cycles by John Bonner, who was a professor of biology at Princeton. Kind of his insight into biology. Now, this is a great one. The Art and Politics of Science by Harold Varmus. Harold Varmus, of course, won the Nobel Prize for oncogene discovery, and he was also head of NIH during the Clinton administration. So it gives you a perspective of his career from both the bench and from political view. All right, the Cutter Incident, Paul Offit. Paul Offit seems to dominate my bookshelf. Uh, this is a great book all about the first batches of polio vaccine released in the 50s, which weren't completely inactivated and they caused polio in a bunch of kids. And this, how America's first polio vaccine led to the growing vaccine crisis. It might've started back then. Here we have To Catch a Virus by John Boos and Marilyn August. Uh, this is uh, this virus discovery, basically a series of essays. This was sent to me and each chapter is uh, different aspects of uh, virus discovery over the years. So it's historical perspective. So you can see that most of those were uh, given to me. Oh, I, I missed one up here on the top. These are mostly literatures, but we have two uh, really good books that I want to mention. First is uh, Spillover by David Quammen, uh, Animal Infections in the ne Next Human Pandemic. Now, David Quammen is a wonderful science writer who travels to places relevant to his stories. So here, uh, you know, he, he has a lot of writing on Ebola virus. He travels to the forests where... Uh, Ebola virus reservoir is thought to be. He's a really good writer. And the last one up here, Cancer Virus, the story of uh, Epstein-Barr virus by Dorothy Crawford and Alan Rickinson. So Epstein-Barr virus, of course, causes a human cancer. It's a herpes virus. And uh, this is the story of its discovery. I often get books to review. And if I really enjoy them, we talk about them on TWIV. All right, so then down here we have uh, two books just sitting on the top. First, uh, Understanding Coronavirus by Raul Rabadon. This is my colleague at Columbia who wrote this 
just a few months into the pandemic, you can see it's a thin book with a lot of the fundamentals, it's really good. And the ghost map. This is the story of London's most terrifying epidemic, cholera by Stephen Johnson. And that brings us to the last shelf here on the left. We have four editions of my virology textbook, Principles of Virology. The first, second, uh, the third and the fourth. Third and fourth, we split into two volumes. Fifth edition is about to be published, so that'll get a place here as well. Uh, next to it, Fields Virology, two volume set, encyclopedia basically. I, I edited uh, this version. You can see my name there on the spline and I also contributed a chapter. This is the newest version of Fields Virology uh, on which I am no longer an editor. I've been fired, uh, but I do have a chapter in here along with Amy Rosenfeld. This one is, now they've reworked the makeup of Fields Virology and now they're splitting it into a few other different volumes. This one's on emerging viruses. These, these all were given to me although I would buy them because they're really good. Uh, here we have another one given to me, Life in Our Phage World, a centennial field guide to the Earth's most diverse inhabitants. Uh, Forrest Rower, Mary Ewell, Heather McLaughlin, and now Hisakawa with illustrations by Leah Pentea and Ben Darby. This is a wonderful, basically encyclopedia of viruses with just wonderful uh, illustrations. Let's see if I can find one for you. Here we have a map and there's a drawing of a phage, Pseudomonas phage, phi six, phi six. Uh, here's a reproduction cycle of PRD1. You see they're all hand drawn, not computer drawn. Um, and this is really great. Here's another phage, beautiful, really nice. All right, this is a book you can't buy. <laughs> this is my PhD thesis on influenza viruses. And it's typed, because that's what we had back then. And all the figures, were stuck in as uh, as photograph prints, photographic prints, as you can see here. Big thesis. This is what got me going in uh, virology. Uh, then we have discovering retroviruses by Anne Scalka. Uh, Anne is, of course, one of my co-authors on the principles of virology, and this is a history of retroviruses. This is really good because she worked in the field and was in it for many years, so she has a lot of insight into what happened. Uh, then we have. The Atlas of Disease by Sandra Hempel. This is just a brief description of various diseases. The Statue Within, an autobiography of Francois Jacob. Absolutely tremendous. Jacob, of course, in the early days of molecular biology, won a Nobel Prize. Coming near the end here, the first book on emerging viruses, edited by Stephen Morse. This solidified the concept that a lot of the viruses we have human viruses, all of them in fact came from animals and they continue to do so today. A lot of concepts here still relevant, even though it's written in the 80s. Self is Gene by Richard Dawkins. I find it a bit out of date. A lot of his thinking is just not correct. So I'm not happy with it any longer. Then we have The Growing Plague by Laurie Garrett. This is uh, newly emerging diseases in a world out of balance. And she wrote this a long time ago. Let's see what the year is. 1994. It's thick book as you can see, but it's basically a history of spillovers. Why these viruses are coming to us now from animals. Well, they always have, of course, but we're getting to understand it. All right, that's most of my science bookshelf here. You can't see them when I'm zooming. I purposely did that so, I don't know, I wanted a different look and also so people wouldn't just be looking at the books and they'd be listening, but I have them right next to me. I'm, I zoom from right here. I can reach over and pull out uh, one if I need it now and then. Uh, and the rest of the bookshelves full of other kinds of books of all sorts. I hope you enjoyed that look at my Zoom bookshelf. I have an even bigger bookshelf in my office at Columbia University. Maybe one day I'll take you through that one as well. I'm Vincent Rackenyellow and I'm Earth's virology professor.